Well, good evening and welcome tonight to our Bible study. I am always overjoyed and excited about meeting with you in this setting. Uh, this is the setting that uh, God has determined for us, and uh, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we're going to see what God is doing in, prep in, in preparation for bringing us out and during this season. I think that we can take advantage of it in terms of moving closer to God, uh, developing an even better relationship with God, understanding His Word much better, uh, growing in grace and uh, our prayer life increasing and our spirit being renewed on a constant basis. And so that's my hope as we spend this time in quarantine and separating from others, but moving closer to God, and that's our effort uh, as we as we live through this season, and I mean it, live through it. Uh, we pray that uh, your life and your day is going well, your family <coughs> is well. We uh, pray for you, and uh, we appreciate you praying for us. Um, we are we're excited about this word that is in front of us tonight. We're still delving into studying God's Word and the purpose of studying God's Word and how and why it is beneficial that the believer uh, have Word in them and study God's Word all the more. And so what I want to do is get right to it. Uh, I want to open with prayer and then uh, attempt to uh, retrace some steps uh, that we left off on last week. Um, in terms of uh, what this word ought to do, how we ought to prepare ourselves in studying this word so that we can be um, uh, word fed and uh, word supplied and not word starved and uh, not thirsty for this word in the sense that we haven't drank it, uh, we haven't eaten it, uh, but that uh, our spirits are constantly fed and supplied. And uh, I want to give you some tools for that as well. So let's talk to the Lord tonight as we enter and approach his throne of grace. God, we thank you for the magnificence of your love and of your might and your power that we experience on a daily basis. God, we approach your throne because we're your children and you've given us access to you. And what a privilege it is, is to enter into your holy presence. And so, God, we thank you for it. We pray now as we uh, open our hearts to the study of your word that you will speak a word unto us. Speak it powerfully, God, that we may hear and not only be hearers of the word, but doers of this word as well. We give you praise for who you are and what you do in our lives. Thank you for blessing our families, immediate and our church families and our community family and uh, our world family. We pray in the broadest sense that you will continue to work your work in according to your will and your pleasure that you will, we pray, bring your people together. That your church will be unified and souls will be saved during this season, God. Let us demonstrate who you are in the power of your might um, and through our testimonies that others will be redeemed through the conviction of their hearts and that their spirits and minds will be redeemed to follow you. And so God, we give you praise for uh, just all you do bless us during this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Wednesday night study. Wow. I'm privileged uh, again to sit before you and to just sort of reflect on what we have, um, what we have covered. Uh, I, I love this word and, and, and I thank God for it. Our, our, our principal passage, as you know, is 1 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, let's 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 go back there if you will quickly uh, it is it is this um, really this basis for 
for our study as as we look at um, the lesson in, in in why we study what we study um, and uh, did I say first second uh, Timothy three why we study and what we study um, um, here is the scripture all scripture verse 16 is given by inspiration Remember now, as we as we recapitulate or repeat what uh, what we've covered to to date, and uh, an attempt to uh, prepare ourselves for where God is taking us, that all Scripture. Now, remember now, in this time, the Scripture that uh, Paul is referring to is the Old Testament. Mm hmm. Scripture is being written during this time that Paul is writing. The, you know, later the Gospels will, will be written. Epistles are being written. Uh, but um, the scripture that is the canon, if you will, of this day is the Old Testament. 39 books uh, written. And he says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It, 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 even whatever word we have, it is it is inspired by God. That's why we can that's why we can depend on it. That's why we can uh, trust it. That's why we can rely on it. And it says, and it is profitable for doctrine. We talked about that because doctrines are those lessons that. Uh, were prepared by church leaders to defend the faith. Uh, uh, remember, Peter said, uh, we have to always be ready to give a reason uh, for the hope that is within us with, uh, with, 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 with the right spirit and um, with the right uh, demeanor, if you will. And so we have to do that in love. And, and, and so, but we need to be able to defend what we believe, what we say God says. And so if, if, we, if we're unable to defend it, uh, people can um, come against it. And if we're not, uh, if we're not in depth, uh, adept with the uh, principles of Scripture and the truth of Scripture, um, we could be deceived. And so it is for doctrine. It is establishing standards, doctrines of salvation, uh, doctrine of the resurrection, doctrine of being justified, declared righteous, um, doctrine of regeneration, doctrine of the second coming. Uh, those doctrines, those truths uh, that we need. And so the scripture is for teaching instruction. It is for also reproof for those who have taken the God's word and misused it. It is for correction. It is not only for teaching and exposing error, but it is for correction. It is for improving, uh, instructing, building men and women up. Uh, and that's what the word is for um, in righteousness, that the man of God uh, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And so the word of God is established for our, for our great benefit, uh, for, for the blessings that God has in it for us, because it is, it is such a word that, that, that is designed to lift us, to build us, uh, to inform us, to inspire us, um, but to also connect us, uh, with God himself. And so what we tried to say last week is that we ought to study this word. Study uh, to show thyself what? Approved. Unto who? Not men, but unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. Timothy is getting this instruction from Paul again, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that's why you're here tonight, not only to be encouraged, but to be informed about what God has said. And so what, 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 we, what we examined is this, that through studying God's word, um, 
we ought to do a couple things. We ought to experience God in the study. We ought to experience God. We ought to have what I call a supernatural encounter with God. Yeah. Because God, this is God's word. God breathed this word. This is God's spoken word. This is God's word. The word was made flesh. That's Jesus. But the word, uh, the written word, this rhema word, uh, it, it, it ought to, it ought to, it ought to inspire us. It ought to bless us when we read it. And so we, we, we have to not, uh, I want to, I want to, uh, discourage you from just reading it just for the sake of gathering facts. Facts are important, but this need to be more than a fact finding lesson. This need to be something that is redemptive, something that is um, inspiring, something that is uplifting, something that helps through the, for the sanctification process, something that helps you to be blessed by this word. And so the word has to be, and I believe should be, a spiritual encounter. Yeah. Look at uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, because as, as we read this word, this is what we looked at last week. Um, as, as we read this word, we come to realize that God is in this word. This is God's word. And, and, and as we read it, we realize clearly that God has to open our eyes. God has to commune with us. God has to uh, bring to our remembrance through the Spirit of God things we have learned. But even as we learn, God has to open our eyes to this. Look at uh, verse 9. As, but as it is written, I have not seen. This is Second Corinthians, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, rather. Eyes have not seen, or I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Watch this. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. God reveals it in his spirit and by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. See, and so it's hard to understand God without having a connection with the Spirit of God. <sighs> For what man knoweth the things of a man save the Spirit of man which is in him? Paul is making a comparison, a parallel. And so he says, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. There are people I found, and I'll, I'll, I'll read a little bit more. Um, there are people that I've found that are uh, in, 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 in Bible schools, in seminaries, and they understand literally in some ways uh, uh, through word study, through historical study, uh, they can contextualize history and and cultures, but they cannot hear God. And so they walk away with many truths. They walk away without absolute truth. They walk away saying that there are many ways to God. They walk away with a lot of understandings that are false, that are error, uh, bred and produced. But when the Spirit of God is leading you, He leadeth you to truth. That's what the Bible says. He leadeth us to truth. That's why Jesus sent the Spirit of God. Verse 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Uh, I'll keep reading. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. <laughs> Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. 
Man cannot understand the things of God unless he has a connection with the Spirit of God. We are birthed forth by the Spirit. We are born by the Spirit. We are led by the Spirit. We are told to walk in the Spirit. The Spirit consumes us and enables us to understand this word. But the natural man, verse 14, receiveth not the things of the Spirit. That's important because everybody's because they're natural and because they have information doesn't mean they are spiritual, meaning uh, understanding of God's ways. For they are foolishness unto them, unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The spirit makes the word alive, brothers and sisters. I'll read through this chapter since it's feeling good to me. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And we went to Philippians uh, 2, which says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And then it talks about his humility. It talks about his death. It talks about his surrendering. It talks about his exaltation. But the mind of Christ, and you cannot have the mind of Christ uh, unless you have the spirit of God. Jesus went away, but he said, I will bring to you a comforter. I will bring my spirit unto you and he will lead you unto all truth. And he will speak what I speak. And the spirit of God who breathes life into us and gives us direction, helps us to understand and connect tightly and closely with the God of this word. It takes God to open our eyes. Luke 24, verse 45. The psalmist in Psalm 119, verse 18 said, God, open my eye, you know, that I may, that I may see, open my eye that I may understand. So what's the point of all of this? We, we want to grow closer with God. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here listening to me tonight who wants to grow closer to God. Proverbs 3.32 tells us that we cannot have intimacy with God with evil, but it is the things of God that brings us closer to God. James 4.8 tells us to draw nigh unto him, to draw closer to God. I want to walk with him. Now the challenge with all of this is that we have an enemy. He, he is our adversary and his goal is to blind us, uh, you know, to keep the word from us. He doesn't want you studying God's word. He doesn't want you elevated. He doesn't want you to see God's uh, instruction for you. I'm, I'm dealing with um, uh, a ministry uh, situation and I'm trying to pray and impress upon the people of God that I'm ministering to that until you surrender to God, the things you're asking for will mean nothing. I've seen life give and grant uh, possessions, uh, houses, uh, cars, well-paying jobs, um, um, just blessings that man will call uh, and that we would even attest that they are. And yet no spirit engagement. And when I've witnessed people get it and then lose it. And then uh, retract and retreat into this sort of cave, wondering where God is. And through their, through their moments of, 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 of high living, they had no God connection. Uh, that God was blessing, God was uh, showering things upon them. They had no God connection. And so when the storm came, that's what the, the writer uh, of the, parable of the sower you know when the storm came and the wind came and adversity came it just or the sun came and burned it away uh, it just it just erased everything because there was no root ladies and gentlemen in order to walk this walk satan will come against you he will work uh, feverishly against you to try and cause you not to see the things of god not to connect with the things of god but i want to encourage you to connect with the things of God and to know that God wants you to have uh, what he wants you to have, but you must uh, please seek him first. This is what 
uh, Matthew and um, in the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus, when he was preaching, he said, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. You can't seek the kingdom without the king and you can't have the king without his spirit. And you can't have the king and his spirit without his word. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all of these things, the Bible said, shall be what shall be added unto you. Now, I, 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 I'm asking you, brothers and sisters, that first of all, that if you would first understand that 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 your level our levels of growth comes through preparation and commitment of study with God in God, because first of all we 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 are we are babes. Uh, I love these connecting scriptures in Peter. First uh, Peter, chapter two, uh, says, "As newborn babes desire the sincere milk milk of the word, that what that ye may grow thereby." If so be, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. I would not be ashamed if I were you, if I'm a beginner. Uh, you, you drink milk like a baby does. You don't get solid food yet. But you grow. You mature. But you strive. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how to do that through meditation and through preparation and through prayer. Uh, we're going we're gonna to look at that. But, but, but turn with me to Second Peter. Uh, well, here, here's what here's what God says through Second Peter, chapter three. Wonderful, wonderful passage, verse eighteen. Here, here's what He says, and then we're going to dig. But grow in grace. There it is again, and in the knowledge, knowledge, understanding of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, uh, both now and forever. We have to grow in grace and in knowledge. Otherwise. We'll be like Ephesians 4, we'll be tossed. And we don't want to be tossed to, nor tossed from. And so what I want to do tonight is I want to engage in a, um, in a reading of a narrative uh, that helps us see how we must prepare ourselves uh, for whatever God has in store for us, but prepare ourselves in the word. Let's go to Joshua chapter one, one of my favorite chapters. It may be yours as well. I was I was inspired. One of our members, one of our sisters uh, sent this scripture to us. Uh, those of us who are on her stream uh, thread, uh, devotional thread. And uh, uh, it just blessed. It just blessed my heart when I read it again. And it, it reminded me of what God said to me very early in my life experience and my walk with him of what I must do and how I must prepare and uh, how I must uh, commit myself and how I must be courageous and not afraid and how I must walk and work and witness at the same time. You know Joshua, Joshua is uh, a successor, one who walked with Moses and now has taken over the reins. Moses has surrendered uh, unto the will of God. And now Joshua is on his way. Now, I want to set this up to please say to you that um, like all of us, even now, God prepares us for where he's taking us. But he never prepares us without his word. Whether you're going to further yourself in in your career, whether you're looking to be married, uh, whether uh, there's a new job, whether you are you're, you're going to have a family, all of this must be based and grounded in you developing your life and your spirit in his word so that God can bless you wherever he is planting you. But you need word, brothers and sisters. You need God's uh, direction, God's guidance, God's instruction. Moses, Moses is gone, and 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 now um, uh, Joshua's job is uh, to.
carry the people forward. And I want to read you just some of this. I love this word. So my principal passage verses are seven and eight, but I want to read up above. I'll, I'll share this little story. Uh, when I first started pastoring, um, friendly and uh, young preacher, younger preacher, <laughs> what I mean, young, younger preacher and um, um, Mother Banks, uh, mother of the church. Some of you may know her and remember her. She's gone on to be with the Lord now. And uh, she kind of sort of became my uh, godmother, mother in love. And uh, we took care of her and uh, she took care of us. Uh, when I became, uh, when I was called to pastor, she was a mother of the church and I was a young, young man. And uh, she wanted to encourage me. And she said God woke her up in the middle of the night and gave her this passage to share with me. And this passage, I, 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 I related to it because I succeeded my grandfather. My grandfather for me was Moses and I was Joshua, or I am Joshua. I, I took over, I took the reins and I moved, but I was young and a um, uh, uh, little green and, 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 and of course uh, not experienced, but I had the spirit of God. And, and, and mother encouraged me with these words. Uh, verse two, I, I'll, I'll begin in verse one. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses's minister, saying. Joshua was, was being prepared as I was for my role, for my calling. Now, I had no idea what God had in store for me, but I had to walk faithfully. I had to commit myself to the call of God and commit myself to the word. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I had to study this word day and night. I had to retreat into my quiet places. And what my teachers would tell me is that get it now, because as, as life begins to expand and mature and, and grow, you have less time uh, for study. And so you need to prepare foundationally now for where God is taking you. I remember, and I'll read further, I remember when we were in seminary and uh, students will say, man, if, if, if I can just get out of school and get to life, I'll have more time for study. I'll have more time for preparation. The preparation season is when God is giving you the time to do it because life is busy, life is demanding. And if you don't have the roots deep, if you have not uh, watered them and, 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 and nurtured them and developed them. It's going to be difficult when you get out in the storm because that's what life is. And then you try and build roots. It's a little more difficult then. I was like Joshua. I was preparing. I was positioning myself for what God is about to take me. And he said, he says in verse two, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, uh, thou and all this people. Unto, unto the land which I do give to thee, even to the children of Israel. And listen what God said unto him, and he said it to me. Every place that the sole of your foot shall thread, or tread rather, upon, that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. The same blessing I gave your predecessor, the same blessing I gave the person who taught you, your instructor, I'm giving to you. You inherit it. You get it because of your faithfulness. And that was a blessing for me because it told me that God had already prepared the way from the wilderness unto this Lebanon, uh, even unto the great river of the Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. God says it shall be yours. Now, now note that note that God is promising, but watch this. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Often people take this word right here and they run with it. But God gives responsibility. God gives accountability to these promises. Note, let's keep reading because the promises of God are true. We're going to learn tonight that his word won't come back void. It won't return void. But there are things, there are responsibilities that we have to honor this word in order that this word will be fulfilled in our lives. 
Verse 5, I don't know if I read it, but I'll read it again. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. I think I read it. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. So here's what I need you to do. Be strong and of good courage. Because the, the places I'm taking you uh, are going to be tough. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be strong, be thou strong and very courageous, that, that thou mayest observe to do, listen, according to all the law. Let me read that again. Uh, only be strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Which Moses, thy servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. See, ladies and gentlemen, the blessings, we, we, we're, we're in this climate, in this season today, that we talk about blessings, but we talk about blessings without responsibility. Faith without works is dead. I know people who say, God, give it to me. And when God gives it, God is the greatest. Uh, God is, is, is celebrated. Uh, um, the expressions that come through the mouth, out of the mouth of the people of God are great and wonderful. And then when the season changes, they wonder where God went. What they don't understand is that when you are rooted and grounded in God, yeah, and doing God's will, God is going to do his work. He's going to be faithful. And yet there are some seasons that will be difficult. But when you're grounded and rooted in the law, in the word and turn not from it, you will be able to survive and stand seasons that are somewhat uh, dry and somewhat uh, like today. Difficult. It is really a test for us. Because God's promises are true. But he says, now, listen, what did my word say? Did I say I'll never leave you nor forsake you? Didn't I tell you that you will walk through valleys of shadow of death, but you are not to fear evil because I'm with you. I thought you understood that I was your light and your salvation. You said to me in the, in the sunlight, whom shall you fear? And if I'm the strength of your life, why are you afraid? God says, don't turn from my word and I will not turn from you. Here it is, verse 7 again. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Do what you've been taught. Follow the instructions of your elders. Those who instructed you, those you are following in the footsteps of, be obedient unto the word. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. All of us have teachers, instructors. Uh, the Bible says, how can we hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? Follow the word of the law that you know, that you've heard. You know, that, uh, Paul says to Timothy, just stir up the gift that is in you. And don't be fearful because God has not given you the spirit of fear. Somebody say amen if you don't mind. He says, don't turn from the right or the left, that thou mayest prosper whatsoever thou goest. Now, there seems to be a condition here. He says that if you don't turn from the right or the left of my word, you will prosper. Now, please note, uh, let me read verse, uh, verse 8 and then we'll back up and, 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 and talk a little bit about this. He says here that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Seems conditional to me. And then thou shalt have good success. Look at verse 9. Verse nine. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Somebody say be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Tell yourself, don't be scared. No, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Now, here, here's where we want to go. Uh, I'm getting excited. Here's where we want to go. The word is here. The word is before you. 
First of all, first of all, what is this word? The word that God gives to Joshua, the book of the law, often is 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 thought of by teachers as the Pentateuch, the first uh, five books of the Bible written by Moses. Yes, the first five books of the Bible written written by Moses, or otherwise Jews would call it the Torah, because the rest of the Bible was not written. Uh, some will say Job is uh, one of the oldest books, but I, I would I would I would affirm tonight that he was talking about Genesis, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, uh, uh, Deuteronomy, Numbers, uh, those five books, the book of the law. He said, "Don't let it pass by you." He said, "It is I will bless you if you turn not from it." The book of the law. Don't let the word uh, lay dormant in your life. He says, hold fast to it, especially, look, ladies and gentlemen, all of us right now are going like the Israelites. We're in a season and we're going into a place we know not of. Who, who could have imagined this pandemic? Who could have imagined how we're living who could have imagined not going to church every Sunday in the building? Who could have imagined how we're witnessing and how we're having to be faithful now? God is saying, I'm testing you. You're going into places that you know not of. He said, but don't turn from the right or from the left. Don't turn to the right or to the left. Stay steady. Stay faithful and hold fast to this word that I've given Unto you. And here's something very interesting that he says. He says in verse 8 This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I what I what I've come to understand about the word of God is this, and, and I don't think God puts mouth there by 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 mistake. Uh, because listen. The word is often spoken and it is revealed uh, through our mouths, through what we say. There's so much power that comes out of what we say. And so there are two levels, two tiers that I want to I want to I want to touch base on and then we'll step out of here Two two levels. And one is the word of God and the word we speak, the word that God has spoken. And then what do we say? Do we speak the word of God? And how do we speak it when we speak? Ah, because the word of God, uh, Romans, uh, Revelation 2, 16, talks about the word being like a sword. It, it's, it's a weapon. It's a weapon. James talks about the tongue and how deadly it is. These are our words, right? Uh, Ephesians 4, 29 talks about how good communication ought to come forth out of our mouths, right? Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. You can see I'm getting excited. Uh, Psalms 141 verse 3 talks about, set God over my mouth, Lord, and watch my lips. Watch what I have to say. Proverbs 15, 1 says, a soft answer turns away wrath but then God says my word that I speak Isaiah 55 11 will not return void and it will accomplish its mission if you will or what it has intended God's word through our mouths ladies and gentlemen and he says so we have to speak it now here's why this is important about speaking uh, I, I think I need to turn here. Let's 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 go to Psalms uh, 19, verse 14. One, a powerful passage that we have. To, can I can I slow down? OK, thank you so much. I appreciate it because I tell you all the time I get to rushing because I want to get you back to where you are. And then some of you I hear you saying, take your time, preach, it. preach it, speak it. We need it. We're at home. We're not going anywhere. OK. I get it. Here it is. Verse verse 14. Here's what the psalmist says. Lord, let the word 
of my mouth. Listen to me. And the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to let me, can I read Matthew 15, 18, and then I come back here because I, here, here's what I'm trying to say to you that I believe that the words we speak reveal our heart. That's why God says what comes out of your mouth reveals your heart. Look, 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 look at Matthew 15. Let me let me let the word speak. Because some of you don't believe me. Some of you say I didn't. It 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 it, it tells who we are. That's why you let people talk. It reveals their hearts. Watch this. But those things which proceeded out of the mouth come forth from the heart. And they defile the man. Shall I read it again? Verse uh, 19, chapter 15, Matthew. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts. That's verse 19. Verse 18 says, but those things which proceeded out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. Here is here's what the psalmist in 1914 says. And so, God, since since the words that I express come forth from my heart, here's what I want you to do. Let the words of my mouth connect with the meditation of my heart and be Acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and and my and my redeemer. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to I want I want to say to you that 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 these words that come out of our heart are, are have to be managed. Otherwise we can condemn ourselves. And so the meditation that 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 Joshua talks about, look at Joshua verse eight. And the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. The word must be in your mouth. But is it, if it's in your mouth, it has to be in your heart. How does it get in your heart? And how does it get right? You have to meditate on it. This thing is not just that simple. You just don't read a verse and go on about your business. Listen, he says meditate, which means ponder on it. Think about it. First of all, when you start meditating, you got to, I think you get a place. You position yourself. Get a quiet place. Position yourself. Get away. And then pray. Ask God to reveal this word unto you. Ask God to make it clear. Ask God to tell you what it is he wants you to know. Meditate on it. That's why you have to you have to you have to take the word and slow down, get a place, position yourself, pray. And then begin to meditate. Here's some steps for meditation, because meditation takes time, ladies and gentlemen. It really does. That's why I'm slowing down. Meditation takes time. You can't. There's no hurrying in meditating. It takes time. It demands all of you. So when you meditate, the first thing you do with the word is you read it. Then you reflect on it. And then you repeat those same words that we just read. Here we go. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the law shall not depart. What You start pondering and thinking, what does that mean for me? God, what are you saying? You reflect on it. And then you repeat it. And then <laughs> you regurgitate it. <laughs> you chew on it. Come up, you take it back in. And you repeat it. And repeat the process over and over again. So that your spirit your heart gets the word so that out of your mouth flows the issues of life, flows truth. And the truth shall make you free. Uh, he says, watch this. Watch this. That thou shalt meditate on it day and night. It takes time. 
and commitment. Uh, not this casual stuff. God has given us time now. We can, we can take time with this word. Study this word. Meditate on it. Do it again. I guarantee you what will happen is that the spirit will bring to your remembrance the things that you have meditated on. I, I was I was I was listening to a member uh, who had just gone through a, a hard time, uh, a, a very difficult time. And, and, and they were trying to figure it out what God was doing. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God. Remember, we have we ought to have a supernatural encounter with God when we study this word. So his spirit can feed our spirit which means it feeds our hearts, which means it feeds our mind. And it brings back to those thoughts, those thoughts to remembrance, uh, the things we have studied and learned. And, and, and this member said, as I was sitting, I heard God. I just heard God through, through some previous studies. This word came back to me and reminded and, and answered a question for them that they had uh, that was, was, was challenging them to no end it was because they had the word in them and they meditated on the word. Ladies and gentlemen, think about this. We are in a season that if you don't have the word, you're going to starve. We are in a season that if you don't study this word, you're going to be fearful. You're going to be panicking on every hand. You're going to be fretting on every hand. Not that circumstances that we see, because it could get worse before it gets better. It gets better. But not that these situations doesn't concern us, but we can trust in God. Listen to what God says, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to what he says. He says, I will bless you if you, listen, he says, I will bless you if you meditate on it day and night. Study this word. You ought to have a daily routine, daily study in the morning, preparation, prayer, get, get away. Get your prayer closet. Get your place where you can study. Maybe it's, in, it's outside. It's in your room. It's somewhere. But get a private place. And then open this book and begin to meditate on it. So it can feed you. It can nourish you. It can bless you. But listen to what God says. Observe. Thou shalt meditate. Um, let's see. Thou shalt meditate therein. Verse 8. Day and night. And thou that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. You won't know how to do it unless you know the word. And the spirit will remind you, convict you, right, uh, of what the word says. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. God says you will walk into blessings. You will walk into favor as you walk in my word. Because you will work my word. I just high five myself. <laughs> Somebody say, work the word. Hallelujah. Let the word work in your life. God says that when you take my word in, when you meditate on my word, when you're guided by my word, when you are doers of my word, you will walk in a prosperous way. Not only that, God says, I will give you divine favor. But then God says, you will be successful. Listen to this. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous because you're walking in my way. And then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9. Have not I commanded thee? Didn't I tell you what I would do? I trust God, ladies and gentlemen. I really do. He says, be strong. I'm crazy enough to trust God. I am. I'm crazy enough to trust God. I trust God with what he says. I trust God that if he says it, it shall come to pass. I trust God that he's going to be, he's going to bless us. He's going to keep us. He's going to preserve us. <laughs> he's going to protect us. He's going to provide for us. He's going to see us through as we stand on this word of God. The word will set you free, brothers and sisters, because the truth will. And you need to know the truth and the truth will set you free. He says, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Uh, neither be thou dismayed. Uh, these situations. 
He says, where you're going, it, it can dismay you. It can, it can cause you to begin to sit back and say, wow, what is this? And, what, and, 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 and shock you. God says, I'm taking you. I'm ordering your steps. I'm taking you into places that you know not of. So before you step over into that place, let me prepare you with my word so that you will be prosperous, so that you will receive favor, so that you can receive the blessings. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Ladies and gentlemen, I close with this. God says, before you go over the Jordan, you need to know I'm with you. The problem is, in this pandemic, if you didn't know God was with you, you're struggling now to know he's with you. But those of us who know and believe that God is with us even now, in front of a walled city, God is still there. In front of a Jordan River that is high, God will open it up. That walled city, God is still there. The city will come tumbling down. The walls will fall. Why? Because God is with us. But unless you know that in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, you will fret, you will be dismayed. And even now, brothers and sisters, study the word to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God says, lo, that's what he told his disciples, look, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. God is with us, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I want, I can't help, and I want to get back in church and shake your hand and hug you and all of that. But until then, God still assures me that I'm with you. I need the fellowship of the saints. I need the gathering of God's people. I want it. But more than anything, I want him so that when I get back together, we can celebrate what God has done, how God has delivered us. How God has set us free. We need to set up some stones here and what begin setting stones so that when our children ask us what happened on the other side, we can tell them why these stones. I'm, I'm putting a stone here and a stone there. Look, I'm, I'm going to be able to tell my children I wore some masks. Do you believe that? I had to separate. We we were not in church physically. I had to tell them that, but we had church and we worshiped God. And I had to tell them, I'm going to tell them that I did Bible study virtually week after week. And yet God was saving. God was delivering. God was preserving. God was setting free. God was helping. I'm about to preach it. God was hoping. God was redeeming. God was feeling. And I want to be able to tell them, put a stone there. I'm collecting stones, ladies and gentlemen, because I got a story I'm going to tell. Ah, God is up to something and he's working it out. Even in this pandemic, God is still good. All I have to do is my part, meditate on his word. Don't go from the right to the right or to the left. Honor what he has to say. And his word will be good and strong and, and mighty in our lives. But he says, look, be courageous. Mm, that's not in your own strength. That's not in your own power. But greater is he. Preach, Reverend, that's in you. Who? You. Than he that is in the world. Point to yourself and say, he's in me. Hallelujah. When you were born again, he gave you his spirit. And the spirit of God says, look, I know you're lonely, but commune with me. Watch what I can do in your life when you spend time with me as you prepare for the promised land. Because God is going to bring us out, ladies and gentlemen, even while we're in it, there are blessings while we're in it. God says. The B portion of the last portion of verse nine. For the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. At church, at home. In your backyard, in your front yard, from one room to the other. <laughs> God is there. But God says, spend time with me. Meditate in my word. And watch what I will do. I'll, I'll, I'll expand you. I'll enable you to understand truth like you've not understood it before. And you'll walk in the favor of God. 
because you will not turn from the right or the left. You will obey me and I will bless you. It's the benefit of the word, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, I don't even want to stop, but I got to. I must. Uh, can I pray? Father, we thank you for this, your word. Thank you for this brief, brief examination of this word and this encouragement that is in your word. God, we want to be, um, as you have uh, set it up and designed it, we want to be work workers and, and witnesses of your word. Um, we want to walk in your light. Um, we want to have a supernatural encounter with you. We want to have the word teach us, reprove us. Yes, correct us, God. But we want to feel the inspiration of this word. We need encouragement. We need your presence and your power. It's in your word. We want to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have milk for the babes, but we want solid food for the adults in the world. And then, God, when we, you start taking us in places we know not of, we want to be able to meditate, stay in the word, prepare ourselves for where you're taking us. Ah, oh, God, and so that we can sense your presence, sense your power. We want to we want to go aside, get a get a place and position ourselves into into prayer. We want to read this word and then repeat this word. We want to reflect upon this word. We want to regurgitate this word and we want to repeat it again. So it will feed our hearts so that what comes out of our mouth will be the word that is in our heart. God, we pray. Will you bless us in such a way that when this pandemic is over, oh, these lights will shine even brighter. What the devil meant for evil, you'll use it for your good. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say, Amen. <laughs> oh, praise God. Praise God. I got happy all by myself. Or did I have some witnesses? Or do I have some witnesses here? Did somebody get, does somebody feel the presence, the Spirit of God along with me? If you do, give God praise for the study of His Word. Give God praise for what you have heard. Do you, are you able to testify like those disciples did in Luke 24 when they said, Did not our hearts burn? Ah, while the man of God spoke on the way. You ought to feel that burning inside as God begins to melt away that old heart and give you a new heart. God bless you. May God keep you. Thank you so much for being faithful to this study. Um, I praise God for it every week. For you who are here and listening and maybe not connected with the church or maybe, maybe not connected with our Lord, Jesus, he died on a hill called Calvary. He shed his blood for the removal of sins because all of us were born in sin. And then God redeemed us by his blood. He opened our hearts and let us hear this word. Remember, you have to have the spirit to hear it. And so we're dead in our trespasses and our sins. But God quickened us and made us alive so that the spirit, by the igniting of the spirit of God, we can open our ears and our hearts to this word. If you've heard this word tonight, you can receive it now. God is waiting to receive you. His arms are wide open. He's knocking at the door of your heart saying, saying, let me in. And if you would open that heart to him, step in. He'll sit at your same table and sup with you. He just wants to receive you now. Tell our discipleship members, they're waiting now. All you have to do is say, hey, I want to talk. Uh, I want to know this Jesus, type it in, and they'll connect with you. Uh, bless you for those of you who want to give your tithes, your, your offerings. Uh, tonight, you're willing to do it. The uh, announcers will give you this, but uh, you can do it by way of our website, by way of our church app, by way of um, cash app, uh, PayPal, uh, just so many ways. Those of you who are bringing it to the church, dropping it in, we have multiple mailboxes at the main campus, at the Family Life Center, in front of the sanctuary on each corner, there's a mailbox and uh, 
at the North Campus, there's a mailbox that you drive up and drop it in. Uh, no matter what church you attend, meaning what location, if you give it at either location, it goes to the same same cause and you'll be accounted for it in the same way. Uh, so we're just telling you, if you live north, you don't have to drive all the way down. Just put it in the north box. And if you live in the main and you go north, you can put it in the main. It's all all in the same, same cup. Yeah, man. And so thank you so much but for your faithfulness. I've gone too long and I got to get out of here. I'm looking at the clock on the wall. So blessings unto you. May God keep you. May God just inspire you to meditate on his word both day and night so that you can be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring it forth this fruit in this season. This is my favorite. His leaf also shall not wither, but whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Peace be unto you. God bless you. Somebody may be crying tonight, but I come to let you know Jesus will. He'll dry your eyes.